So the, um, let's be clear, the, yes. the time is what? The time now is 12.35. No, I have how many time, how many minutes? Five minutes. Five minutes, okay. The only thing that uh, probably is relevant in my bio is that I am the research associate with the Center for Law and Society. Um, and it is from this perspective that I'm going to approach the topic today. This also happens at a time when I'm mulling in my mind Mamuno um, Sizu is a very provocative presentation. Mamuno Sizu is Grasa Mashe, right? Uh, um, um, very provocative presentation at Mistra, which was a reflection on Mozambican's struggle and particularly the philosophy or rather the approach to tribal identities. And I found that very, very interesting uh, because President Samora Machel, as well as Frelimo, as well as the African National Congress and all of us, etc., etc., believed that tribalism is undermining, it undermines the national identity and national liberation. And there's a reason for that, and that remains valid in terms of colonial legacy and in terms of apartheid. Then she comes back so many decades later, and then she says, well, maybe we might have gotten this a little bit wrong. Uh, maybe we put too much emphasis on the need for the tribe to die in order for the nation to survive. And what we do need to understand is that it's important. The tribe is important uh, as an original seed um, in order for the nation to live. Now, I'm trying to grapple with this. So here's my question. What is freedom? What do we understand by freedom? Freedom, as Angela Davis says, has got multiple meanings, and it's a state that is never fully acquired. It's a destination, it's something that you have to continue to dip on, to revisit, and to refine. President Michelle Bachelet yesterday said that representative democracy is no longer enough. And in fact, I'm sure we both agree it never was enough. And, and that people want more um, from their governments, from their societies, and just mere representative democracy. Uh, Mrs. Marshall says that it seems in South Africa that the more structures that are created and the more laws and the more women seem to be visible, the more violence uh, is, is facing them. I want to argue that actually the problem is in the point of origin. It is in the point of how we conceptualize freedom. It is in the point where we conceptualize these structures. It is in the point where we conceptualize what gender equality is. Here we are talking about structural inequality. We are talking about um, an identity that is so deeply embedded. People fight to death claiming that heterosexuality is not African. Uh, and you look at them in the name of culture, they say, but this is not us. And I say, I'm sorry, but you know, fuck all about your culture and African sexuality. Because if you do, because if you do, you would know that African sexual ambiguities have been as much a part of who we are since time immemorial. So when you don't name these things, when you don't talk about violent masculinities, when you don't talk about militarized masculinities, when we have the general, you know, uh, 15 years after freedom, coming in and telling us, stomach in, chest out. And we, we talk about war against poverty. We talk about war against violence against women. We talk about our language is military. And indeed, if our language is military, our thinking is military. 
and our behavior is military. Our economy is militarized. Whether it is through the barrel of the gun or whether it is through using other forms of violence. It is important, therefore, that we recognize that in the world right now, we are facing a deeper crisis than we can imagine, and that is a crisis of imagination. It is a crisis of revisiting things anew, describing the problems anew, and revisiting that which we hold dear and that which I, as a 14-year-old who was detained, believed in, and thinking, perhaps I need to refine my thinking. This is important for us, as Cynthia Enlo says in, a, in her book, A Curious Feminist. She says, it is important, curiosity is important for feminists, because if we're not curious, we do what we have done all over again. And then she says that ultimately what happens is there's one word that comes out when we, review, when we, we, we are no longer curious, and that word is always. We have always done things this way. It is our tradition to do this thing. It is our culture to do this thing. And we need to be able to say, let us be curious. The situation calls for us to be very, very curious and to be very, very, to have a daring imagination. To say to our presidents, and I'm going to be very controversial here, to say to our presidents, I'm sorry, if that is your definition of Africanness, keep it to yourself. That definition of Africanness is not me. You don't speak for me. When you speak chauvinism, when you speak heterosexism, you don't speak for me. When you come with laws ostensibly to reverse the legacy of apartheid in terms of marginalization of African customary law and in terms of marginalization of African customary systems, and in fact, you deeply embed the apartheid system of thinking and you deeply embed the colonial defined way of culture and tradition that you are no longer thinking as a government, you have reverted to always, and it is a tradition, and that is not helping us right now. Thank you.